Okay, I was asked to uh, test this little multimeter. It's a, I'll probably blow the pronunciation, but Kiwitz. It's a model KM201. You'll find a uh, buying link in the description of the video if you're interested in this thing. It's just a multimeter. It's got a, a couple of things on it that are a little different than some, and it is automatic. Now, <clears throat> what does automatic mean? Well, I'll see if I can give you an idea. When you turn this thing on, it's a long press. Okay, everything comes up. It says auto, okay? That means I can voltage test with it or I can use it as an ohm meter. Meters used to be, if you had them in ohms and went to test voltage, it would burn up the meter. That's pretty much long gone now, and even the little cheap meters have it, so where they will, they'll test whichever one. Uh, whether it's voltage or whether it's resistance, it doesn't make any difference. It'll go ahead and uh, test it couple of things about it most meters have this you can store the leads on the back another thing about this when you pull these leads off and let's say you're going to use this meter it's probably the best way to use it is like that okay so you have one of the probes that you're going to put on something you're going to test and then use the meter uh, for the other probe. If, you, uh, if you're just using it like that, this meter is really light and it just kind of moves all over the place so you kind of, it falls off and, and so on like that. So if you essentially use the meter as a probe so that you're uh, let's let's test something out here Okay, let's say I wanted to test whether there was voltage and what the voltage was in this box Okay, I've got the wires coming in. I can take the entire meter Just set it down like that on Set the probe in and set the other probe on the other side and We're going to read it now you can do that with just the probes, but the thing is, it's harder to hold. It's hard to get everything together. Uh, so if you can use it that way, it's probably better. Anyway, uh, so it goes to uh, whatever voltage you have. Okay, now here I'm gonna use this thing as an ohm meter. So I'm gonna test my two leads together. And it gives me the beep uh, because there's uh, virtually no resistance between the two. So it automatically switches back and forth. And that works fine. Uh, when you first start it up, it's going to uh, show this auto. And it's got the volts and ohms and, of course, the beepy thing. It's all... You can't see it very well, but it's right up there telling you it'll do any of those things. Okay, other things it does. Okay, now it's gone to non-contact voltage. And there's this little nubbin right up here that you're going to place close to where you believe there's power, and it'll tell you if it's there. And I'll demonstrate that. Okay, we're going to take this with non-contact voltage, and we're going to place it down here. Okay, it shows voltage. It's showing it's hot, anyway. Uh, and that is a two, uh, 240 volt, so uh, it should show hot. I'm going to shut this off and we'll bring it up again and see what happens. Now, it's still showing. There isn't any voltage reading there. I can set this thing in voltage, and I'll do that here. 
Okay, I've got it set in uh, voltage, and I'm going to take one side and then one side, and it's not going to show anything. But the non-contact voltage did. When you're using these things, if it detects voltage where there isn't any, I don't have too much of a problem with that. Uh, most of them do it. I've I've tested a bunch of non-contacts and they, they all seem to do that on breakers. If it doesn't say there's voltage there, that isn't absolutely true. There can be failures there. Uh, and if I don't detect voltage there, that doesn't mean I'm going to stick my hands in that box and just start playing around. I'm going to use... Uh, a meter with probes. I'm going to or set this one to uh, auto and use the probes to test for voltage before I stick my fingers in there. But it's good to tell you if it starts beeping at you, yeah, there's power there and it's very fast. You can get it done quick. So much for the uh, NCV. Now, the other thing I wanted to go into, uh, it's got this live thing on it. Okay, using the live measurement, we've got it in the live position. Uh, I can just use one probe, and it has to be the, the red probe, to see if there's power there. Now you see it's showing power there. Now if I go to the, the ground, it's not showing any power. And if I go here, this doesn't show any power either because the breaker's off. I guess it's a way to find out if you have power there with just one uh, probe. I, I don't find it all that useful for me. Maybe some people might. Now the next one, if you press this button again, you get to phase. And you can detect the three different phases of a three-phase system. I don't have any three-phase that I can test it with, so I'm not even going to get into that. So I'm not even going to fool with that. The other things that are on this thing, uh, that's a data hold. Uh, I don't, and it, the little H comes up when you've got it in, uh, engaged. I don't especially like data hold it's okay if it's in a place where you can't see it and you're trying to read the meter and you, you can't look at it. You can hit the data hold thing and it'll show it. But uh, if I was to, let's say, okay, I've got it in data hold right now. Now let's say I wanted to check a circuit. Okay, you can see what it did. It didn't give me the voltage that's there, but it did turn this display red. Uh, I take it off. Oh, come on, you're supposed to, there you go. 240, it's showing 240. Okay, if I hold it, then it's going to hold like that. But if I go to use it again, uh, and touch the probes, all it's going to do is turn the display red, and you have to notice it's actually going to do that. Because uh, you could be, you could have a number on here that you're holding, and it's, it's not going to display that number as long as the H is on there. That's why I don't much like it. Uh, the other aspect of this, you got this little light. I know, not a big deal. It's okay for really dark areas, but yeah, it's it's not real powerful. Uh, but it is a light, you know, and I gotta say I love lights. Overall, is this meter any good? Uh, it's a pretty cheap meter, uh, but any more cheap isn't always as bad as we think. You know, it used to be if I didn't pay a hundred bucks for a meter, I wasn't interested in keeping it around but I've used a bunch of these cheaper ones and they're okay as for the leads uh, these do not appear to be replaceable uh, 
heavily used meters do wear out their leads and uh, this will probably eventually do that I've got a couple of meters that are set up this way and uh, I haven't broken them yet but I don't do as much work as I used to either so uh, that may be a negative on it uh, it's got a little bag that comes with it and uh, here this gigantic instruction book is it any good yeah it's okay I'll, I'll use it for for various things around the shop just like I would use any other meter uh, it is convenient it is inexpensive and it does most of the things you want so uh, if you're looking for a multimeter now this doesn't do amps there's no clamp on it or anything like that but uh, it does multimeter stuff so checking circuits and so on yeah it's fine nothing uh, you know it isn't outstanding in any way but it pretty much does its job one other thing I'll note that it does like most meters anymore it automatically shuts itself off if you leave it like that where it's uh, it's on in 15 minutes it's going to shut down uh, which that happened quite a while ago almost all meters have that anymore it sure saves a lot of batteries and that's it on this one